Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to extend path node functionality in uh, third person shooter kit. So you can enable or disable path nodes on runtime to do something like this, for example. Start the game, I'll pause it. AI will not go anywhere, and after five seconds, this path node will be enabled, like so. And after another five seconds, next path now will be enabled, and so on and so forth. You can do it, for example, um, for example, with, with anything you want, actually, with triggers or uh, any logic that you, that you need. Okay, so this is end result, and uh, I'm going to clean project on four twenty seven under engine four twenty seven new level. It's a clean third person shooter kit. Let's extend some this area. Add nav mesh. Like so. Press in P. Okay, nav mesh compiled. And I'll press path node. Actually, a few of them. Like so. I'll place AI like so. I'll set the faction to player so it will um, not attack me just for this for this test for this testing. And as an initial part mode, I will set this guy. Um, yeah. So with this simple setup. You can see the connection is there. Ah, and of course I will connect these path nodes to each, each, each other. So next path node array, I will choose the next one. And for this path node, I will choose this guy. So as you can see, the uh, connection works. You can see the lines like so. And when I will start the game, it will, imme it will immediately go to the path node and wait the time that is set in path node and then go to the next one. So what we want to do, we want to control this, how we will do path roll depending on the gameplay logic. So now I will go to path node blueprint, control E. And let's add a variable called path node enabled. Expose it and I will put it into settings category. And it will be enabled, it will be true by default. So that's about it. Uh, let's go to BT human in the behavior tree. And let's go to updating patrol path node, uh, behavior tree task, double click. And let's go to event graph. And we need to extend the logic here a little bit. Oops, let's maybe move it, move this a little bit like so. So here we have a um, check for initial path node. So we need to add it like two times, this check. So this is path node, this is initial path node. Mm, has actually where well we can, we can do it in multiple ways, but when it has broken reference, of course, nothing should, should happen. Let's me put it like this. So when it's all valid, let's add another branch and let's get path node enabled like so. So if it's enabled, it will go further, it will assign the path node and, and play as it should. If it's not, it should circumvent the whole, ar the whole logic here. Like so. Okay, so that's for initial one, and now for the next, for the next patterns, I will copy this pattern enabled. Let's go to pattern search logic, and here we have the conditions. You can see we're checking if it's available, broken reference. So let's add another one which is path node enabled, extend the end, 
and that's about it. And actually, ah, and of course we need to okay, so we need to close it, and of course we need to enable enable it someday. Um, so let's test it. Now all of them are enabled. Let's test it how it works. So it works as it should, and let's disable them, all of them. So pub don't enable set to false. Okay, so it's not going anywhere. All right, so the the, the first one is. Disable. Let's enable the first one. Let's check. Yeah, so it's working, and he's not going to the next ones. Okay, so we want to enable them. For example, after some time, or or on trigger. Let's do it both. So I'm selecting all pot nodes now, and let's get a reference to these actors, and let's. Um, this order, I think that's it. It's a it's two, three. Okay, so that's the order. And let's set path not enabled like so on each of these guys. And um, after delay, for example, so begin play. I'm adding delay on by holding D. And let's say after five seconds. The first button will be enabled, and after another five seconds, next one will be enabled, and so on and so forth. Let's add some. Whoops. Let's add some information to the screen. And button one enabled. So now that happened. Okay. Like so, and like that. Okay, whoops, we don't have to save this. Uh, okay, let's disable the first one, the second one, and the third one is also disabled. Okay, let's start the game. So now, nothing happens. There you go, we, we have a left. Uh, left of corner there's information. We, we don't see the pattern let's let's do two more things I will give this lock here so we'll see the actually the cutouts here also and I will enable visibility of the of the mesh so we'll see each of the patterns so I'm double clicking on the yellow thing hidden in game false double click game false and double click hidden in play hidden game false great let's clear this duck now we know where he's going to as you can see in log also it happened it's uh, you know prints partner one enabled partner two enabled and so on. So he didn't uh, he didn't want to pattern three immediately because there's a wait time on each of them. So we can if you want to have immediate uh, you know immediate go from pattern to pattern, you can set smaller values for smaller wait time. You need to take account that um, it's also working. I'm not sure. Maybe that's the five seconds is not enough. Depends on what you want to do. So he's still. Ah, yeah, he's still waiting, of course, because the pattern two is um, not enabled yet. There you go. Okay. Um, so that's that's about it, and. What you can do is set it on based on triggers. Also, let's add a uh, box trigger. For the for the last one, I as you can see there is a there is a log that I made. Uh, the no pattern added to array because he's like 
here you have zero wait time so basically it means infinitely waiting so this should be set to true or you can add another another path nodes that's why there is this warning that actually you should you shouldn't um, you should enable infinitely waiting if the wait time is zero and you have no next path nodes okay so let's uh, we have this trigger here let's make it equal to trigger and i will sorry i will enable this based on this trigger and um, what do we want to do Aha, uh -huh, yes, uh, I want to I want to have it visible in, in game. Okay, so I have it selected. I'm not sure if there should be an event, something like add event on begin overlap, actor begin overlap. There you go. So other actor, can we get a tag? I think has tag, get tags. Get all the gameplay text now. Uh, get control. I think there is something like find, and you can find it by player tag. This player has a has a um, tag called player. Um, actually, what can we do? Maybe there is something. Maybe there is find. Hmm. I'm looking for some contains item, yeah, this one. That's better one. So it means the player went through this. We'll do something. Okay, let's add um, print string first. That's a good practice to see if this actually works. Because I don't know, hopefully. And player crossed trigger. There we go. Uh, let's end that. Let's see if this actually works. Yeah, there we go. We have this log it here. Um, that's great. So, for example, we can, if the player triggered this, we can start this logic and not on begin play. Uh, so, for example, the path node one will be enabled based on um, you know when player goes through this trigger so let's test it he's not moving as expected that's great let's go to trigger there you go he starts to move he starts to patrolling that's what we want okay thanks uh, for watching and hope that i hope that helps you guys see ya